بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على تمان لأكملان خير خلق الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا بما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ثم أما بعد Brothers and sisters my fellow Calgarians, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Of course, as always, I'd like to thank all of you for having me here once again and welcoming me amongst all of you and in your community. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi, from my heart, I ask Allah azza wa jal to continue to shower His barakah and acceptance in your community. Allahumma ameen. Tonight, insha'Allah ta'ala, let's get right into it. We're talking about the real you the real you. Now this is an important topic and a topic which is rarely discussed at least in this fashion in the way that Quran addresses this issue. How you know who you really are. Because human beings when it comes to their etiquettes, when it comes to their behavior, behaviors and the choices that they make in their life, they fall into two main categories. The first category are people that literally wake up, eat, sleep, go to work, go to school, make money, relax, chill out with friends, do all of those things. Islam is just sort of lingering in the background. But they are Muslim. When there's a halaqa, when there's a conference or a jum'ah, they, they're there. Otherwise, it's just life as usual. Then you have the second category of people that are the complete opposite. Everything about them is Islam. Everything from the decisions they make, from the way they think, everything about them is Islam, Islam, Islam. The verses that I'd like to share with you this evening, inshallah, seeks to bring at least a nice balance of these two categories of people and at the same time discovering who you really are as an individual, your real purpose in this world, and more so refining and at least perfecting your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. I've chosen the concluding verses of Surah Al-Hashr. These set of verses are verses you all know, you probably have memorized them and you hear them recited in Salah many, many times. And where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala begins or at least concludes this Surah and He tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ittaqullah وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدٍ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Until the end of the verse. For those of you who are still not familiar, these are the verses that end off هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ هُوَ الرَّحْمَانُ الرَّحِيمُ Until the end. You know, when I ask some of my friends about these verses, now these are friends who don't know Arabic, who have never really studied the Qur'an, but they hear these verses all the time, and I say, what do you think about these verses? They say, I love them. What are they talking about? I don't know, but I always hear Allah's names mentioned in those, in those particular verses, so I just love them. That was really interesting to me, because what this told me is that even naturally, whether you like it or not, there's already sort of a foundation of love and connection between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. It's already there. You're hearing these beautiful verses, you're hearing Qur'an in general, and you're already in love with it. What is it talking about? I don't know. It's just the eloquence, it's just the Arabic, it's just the recitation, it's just beautiful. So listen to how Allah Azza wa Jal helps you and I discover the real you. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, O you who believe, ittaqullah, have taqwa of Allah. Now we've mentioned this before that the word taqwa itself doesn't mean fear of Allah. In and of itself, by definition, it's not talking about fear. Fear is a connotation or it's sort of something that will manifest out of taqwa. Taqwa comes from the word wiqayatun, which means to protect yourself from something that's going to harm you. So when you're in your homes and you turn on your security system, what you're doing is you're protecting your family and your home from the evils outside of your home. You're protecting yourself. That's taqwa. So Islamically, taqwa is to protect yourself from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. How do you do that? By following His commands. Do what He says for you to do. Stay away from what He prohibits you to do. Allah Azza wa Jal says, have taqwa of Allah. 
وَلْتَنْظُرُ نَفْسُ مَّا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدَ Here is how one of the ways Qur'an tells you how to achieve this taqwa. Now you hear these verses all the time in Qur'an that Allah Azza wa Jal will say, يَا أَيُّوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Hundreds of times in the Qur'an, Allah is telling you, اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Almost every single time Allah is telling you to have taqwa of Him, there's always something different to do. يَا أَيُّوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يَا أَيُّوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Allah is talking about your speech, Allah is talking about your life, always different things. Now here, Allah is saying, وَلْتَنْظُرُ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ Look at yourself and analyze and assess for a moment what have you put forth or allocated for tomorrow. In this ayah, غَدًا or غَد, here is not talking about tomorrow meaning Saturday, it's talking about tomorrow meaning يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah Azza wa Jal is saying to you, just stop for a moment and look at yourself. وَالْتَنْظُرْ comes from the word نَظَرَ نَظَرَ means to stare at something for a really long time. So look in the mirror and stare at yourself for a while and just ask yourself, your name is Muhammad, you're Ahmed, you're Fatima, whoever you are. And just ask yourself, what are you doing with your life? If you were to meet Allah Azza wa Jal tomorrow, that's what the ayah is teaching you. Stare at your life and stare at yourself as though you're going to die today and meet Allah Azza wa Jal tomorrow. Are you ready? Some Muslims, when I mention this, they say to me, well, look, Brother Muslah, I'm trying. I'm really trying in my life. I'm doing everything that I can. Wallahi, let me tell you something. If you are comfortable with the idea of saying that if you died today, if you died tonight, that you're comfortable to say to Allah, Oh Allah, in my 20 or 30 years or 50 or 60 years of my life, I have done my best. That's one thing. But let's just face it, the reality of many, many, many Muslims around the world, that's not the reality. You always wish that you could do more. You always know in yourself, I could have done this better. I could have made better decisions in my life. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying to you, if you have real taqwa in your life, stare at your own nafs. Look at yourself and keep asking this question. What if tomorrow I'm going to meet him? What if tomorrow I have to stand in front of him? What if tomorrow it's going to happen? Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Wattaqullah. Again, twice in an ayah. Every time this happens in Quran, it's basically Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, Look, if you didn't hear me the first time, listen to it again. Have taqwa of Allah. If you missed that message or you missed the command the first time, here's the second time. This happened in Surah An Nisa in the first ayah. Ya ayyuhan nas, ittaqu rabbakum allazi khalaqakum min nafsi wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa'a. What happened next? Wattaqullah. Again, Allah started off with, Ya ayyunas, ittaqu rabbakum. Have taqwa of your master. Then in the same ayah, Allah tells you again. So it's happening here. This is how the Quran deals with stubbornness. Some people are just hard headed. You can tell them the same message 25 times a day. And at the end of the day, you still have to tell them the 26th time, and the 27th time, and so on. And that's just the way it goes. Surah Al-Rahman doesn't mention that many times just for no reason. It's because the audience in that surah are real stubborn people. They're not getting the message. So here Allah Azza wa Jal is attacking this problem that I know and all of you know, many of us we suffer from this. Generally speaking, many Muslims suffer from this. So Allah Azza wa Jal concludes, Allah Azza wa Jal is fully well aware of what you do. Now there's a difference between ta'malun and taf'alun. Both of them mean actions. Allah didn't say Allah khabirun bima taf'alun in whatever actions you do. Taf'alun is different from ta'malun, righteous deeds. Taf'alun are just random actions that you do. You're not thinking about them, you just do it. Ta'malun, there's an intention behind it. You thought about it, you prepared yourself, and then you do it. So it's not something spontaneous and random that just pops out of nowhere. 
So that's what Allah Azzawajal's focus in is those righteous actions that you work hard for and you put a sincere intention behind, those are the ones I'm paying attention to. The next ayah is amazing to me. It's amazing to me. And anybody here who's studying psychology, if we have any psych students that are here, if you've studied the subject before, this ayah is for you. Allah Azza wa Jal continues and He says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal says, and don't be of the people who forgot Allah. Because as a result, Allah has caused them to forget themselves. This is the worst punishment you could be in. When you forget Allah, Allah makes you forget who you are. This is the real you we're talking about. I want to give you an example of what we're talking about here. In another verse in Surah At-Tawbah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah Azza wa Jal says that He wants to make a transaction with you and I. He wants to make a transaction. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying to you, sell yourself and your wealth to me. And in exchange, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you Jannah. In exchange, I'm going to give you Jannah. But I want you to give me yourself and give me all of your wealth. And I will give you what? Jannah. Now look at it from a humanistic point of view. Human beings, whenever we do transactions with each other, we usually pay for something and then we get our product immediately. An immediate transaction happens. You pay, you give, you get your product. Even if you don't pay, you still get your product and you say, I'll pay you in six months. You set up a payment plan. The point is, is that we want things to be given to us now at this moment. That's the nature of human beings. None of us is going to run away from that. So there's a sense of an impulsive attitude that's attached to that. You see something, a new phone, new something just comes out, you just throw it in the cart and you don't think about it. Here Allah Azzawajal is saying to you, look, when it comes to my transaction with you, I want you to give me these two things, yourself and your money. And in exchange, I'm not going to give you Jannah right now. You know what I'm going to give it to you? When you're six feet in the ground and dirt is being thrown on your face, then you'll have the Jannah. So in the meantime, your payment plan that you set up with Allah is what? It's every single choice you're making in your life. All the good deeds that you're doing. All the decisions that you're making. The way you smile and talk with each other how you make your money, what you choose to eat, where you choose to go, where you choose to live, how you treat your family, how you treat your friends. These are the payments that Allah says, give me that now. But in exchange, I'm not going to give you this product that you're paying for. I'll give you that later. And you know what's amazing about this? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, you just trust me and I will give you this Jannah. And here's the question. That's a high level of trust. You know how people, they always say, I have full trust in Allah. I trust Allah with everything, with my life, with my soul, with everything. Okay, Alhamdulillah, you can appreciate that, right? Until what happens? Until times get rough. So, a typical classic example of this is guy and girl want to get married. I'm kind of like this marriage dude. I, all my examples have to do with men and women for some reason. So... Guy and girl wants to get married, they're engaged. The guy says, you know what? She's beautiful, she's the woman of my dream. She says the same thing, he's the Hercules of my life and inshallah. But then at the end of the day, what do they both, both, uh, both of them say to each other? Because things are romantic, things are beautiful, things are calm, no problems. They say, look, no matter what happens between you and I, I have full trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Until what? There's some bankruptcy that happens in that relationship. She might request something from him, he might request something from her, there's family politics involved, some trouble comes in, what happens? It's your fault. The other person, oh, it's your fault, it's your family, it's your dad, it's your mom. Before you know it, what happened to that whole, I trust in Allah, Allah is in charge of everything, I give everything to Allah, Allah do whatever you want, what happened to that? So this is what Allah is saying, real trust is really difficult. 
So that's one way of looking at it. But I want you to think about the opposite now, the reality. Shaitan, on the other hand, he comes to you and says, Hey, look, I want to make a transaction with you. Do what I say. I'm going to open every ounce of luxury and desire for you in this world. Just do it. Don't worry about payments later. Don't worry about that. 20, 30 years, you'll deal with that. Now, that mouse is sitting right beside you in the computer. Just click it and it'll open. And just enjoy it for the moment. Just click it. Don't think about nothing else. Just do it. So for 20 or 30 years, what are you doing? That's what your whole life is. Until you leave this world and you are confronted with Allah. What are you going to tell him? Oh Allah, I trust in you. You fell into shaitan's trap. You know, a typical example that you see every single day is you and I, Muslims. If you have like the kafir thinks that, okay, this is just one life to live, so live it up. Do everything you can and enjoy this life because it's just one time. You and I know it's not the end for us. It's not the end of the road here. So the brother, mashallah, he's sitting there trying to grow this messy, dirty beard. She's trying to put on her hijab and all her friends are telling her, what's wrong with you? You're so beautiful. You have beautiful hair and you're going to cover it up? You're such a good looking guy. You're so strong. You're so healthy. You're, you know, you look so handsome. And now you're going to grow, grow a beard and cover all that beauty? What's wrong with you? That's the pressure you have to fight. Why? Because you're hoping to get your exchange with Allah Azza wa Jal. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says the same ayah in Surah At-Tawbah, فَاسْتَبْشِرُوا بِبَيْعِكُمُ الَّذِي بَيَعْتُمْ بِهِ Allah Azza wa Jal says to you, feel congratulated that you completed this sale or transaction with Allah Azza wa Jal. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, your friends are not going to congratulate you. Nobody's going to congratulate you except whom? Except Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to increase us in our patience, Allahumma Ameen. That's what we're striving for. That's what you're working hard for. So this ayah is saying to you, look, if you forget Allah, I'm going to make you forget yourself. So you know what your life becomes? You wake up, brush your teeth, go to work, eat, chill out with friends every weekend. Yo, bro, what are you doing this weekend? Let's just hang out. Let's just do whatever. Play ball, do this, do that, restaurants, chill out, die. That's your whole life. You literally live like a zombie. Look good, fix your makeup, do all of that good stuff, dead. That's how you meet Allah. Why? Because you forgot yourself. Some of us probably have gone for Umrah and Hajj at some point. And we might know Muslims who have gone to Hajj and Umrah as well. You ever notice some of them, after a month or two, they come back to their homes and they're in this Iman hype, this Iman high. So they're in the massages, they're doing everything. And slowly what happens? Slowly extinguishes and dies. They go back to that zombie life all over again. Why? Because you're forgetting Allah. What Muslims do today, many of them they do, they set schedules with Allah. This is my Allah time right now. When I'm sitting in a khutbah, that's my Allah time. When it's just before I go to sleep. Or what happens to me all the time, Shaykh, can you tell me a, a, a dua or an ayah that will help me pass my exams? Shaykh, I'm sick, I have a headache. Can you tell me the ayah that cures my headache? No problem, you pray? No, I never pray, but I just, I just want the ayah, just for my headache. I'll do a prayer later. Is that what Quran is for you? Is that what it's become for you? I can't tell you how many times people ask me to come and recite to their wedding. Some of them I've done. <laughs> Subhanallah. I think it's a blessing to be able to stand in front of the people and recite a book that Sahabas shed their blood for us so we could have. I think it's an honor. I sit there and I start reciting the verse. I leave. Guess who rolls out after? The DJ. That's what Quran is. Something ceremonial. You celebrate it and then you go home. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, you're forgetting the real you. So your heart now is engulfed. It's not breathing no more. You might hear people who say, I can't believe I did that mistake because that's not me. You're right, that's not you. So where is your heart? It's covered with desires. It's covered with backbiting. 
It's got covered with evil. So your real person inside of you is engulfed. It can't breathe. So you can't come out and the people can't appreciate who you really are. What did Allah say about these people? These people are inherently corrupt. Fasiqun is plural for fisqun. Fisqun means something that becomes very dirty and rotten over time. Something that eventually starts to become moldy and dirty. That's what Allah is saying about you. If you forget Him, Allah is going to reduce you to nothing more than a dirty animal. Animals are the ones that just sort of walk around and do whatever. That's what your life becomes. Now I want you to think about how many of your brothers and sisters you know are like this. How many of them keep hearing ayat and Qur'an, taraweeh every single year. They're in the masjid, they're in the front rows. And after that they're gone. They're gone. They forgot Allah and they don't realize it. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from this. Allahumma ameen. The next verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون The people of the fire and the people of Jannah on the day of judgment, they're not going to be equal. The people of Jannah, these are going to be the true champions. These are going to be the true winners. I think there's a duality in meeting here. So on the one hand, there's an akhira meaning to this. But on the other hand, there's also a dunya meaning as well. When you forget Allah, it's as if you're tasting a bit of punishment in this world. But if you're a person that remembers Allah every single day of your life as much as you can, to the best of your ability, it's as if you're tasting a little bit of that bliss, a little bit of that happiness or Jannah in this world. You're tasting a little bit of that happiness. You've, you've discovered the real person inside of you. Allah Azza wa Jal says next, لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون. Every time I read this ayah, I don't know what to do with it. I don't even know how to translate it. I don't even know how to talk about this ayah. I don't know how to explain it properly. This ayah is so profound to me. Allah Azza wa Jal says, look, if we took this Qur'an and we placed it on a mountain, you'd see the mountain do two things. It will have khushur and it will become mutasaddi'an. How? From the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. Just pause for a moment. Musa alayhi salam in Surah Al-A'raf asked Allah, qala rabbi arini anzur ilayk. He says, oh Allah, show me, I want to see who you are. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Qala lan tarani. You're not going to be able to see me. Walakin indur ila al jabal. Look up to the mountain. See that mountain over there? Go look at that mountain. Fa in istakarra makanahu fa sawfa tarani. If it can uphold its position and it stays where it is, you're going to see me. Falamma tajalla rabbahu lil jabal. Ja'alahu dakka wa kharra musa sa'iqa. When Allah Azza wa Jal showed his glory, his tajalli to this mountain, he showed his glory, his tajalli to this mountain. What happened to the mountain? It exploded. What happened to Musa alayhi salam? Wa kharra musa sa'iqa. Musa collapsed and he fainted. That's what happened when Allah showed His glory to that mountain. Here, Allah is showing the Qur'an to this mountain and He's saying, look, this mountain, two things happened to it. Number one, it had khushur. Khushur, by definition, it means to soften the heart. Now, what that, in, what that interprets or how that translates is, you know how people say, I want to have khushur in salah? What you're saying is that you literally want to feel numb out of the fear of Allah. You literally soften your heart to such a point where you start trembling in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. Can you imagine how khushur would look? If we really had true khushur, can you imagine how your salah would look? Why? Because it's just you and Him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We just prayed Salatul Isha. We just prayed Salatul Isha. It's just me and Him. And I was telling Shaykh Naveer I didn't want to lead the salah. And one of the reasons why I always try to do that 
But Alhamdulillah, if I'm given the opportunity to the best of my ability, trust in Allah and I'll just do my best at it. But some of the, some of the reasons, one of the reasons why I chicken out a lot, I don't want to be responsible for everyone behind me. Allah is going to ask me about all of your salah that you just prayed behind me. I have a part of responsibility of what you did, of your salah as well. If I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about how the raptors are getting creamed tonight, that's a big problem. <laughs> okay? Which, by the way, they actually are. They're down like 41 points. Anyhow. <laughs> so the point is, is that I'm standing there. I can't think about those things. I have to keep battling with it. Why? Because I'm your imam at that moment. I have to be responsible for all of you. Now, how does this translate with the ayah we're talking about? Allah Azza wa Jal says, look, this mountain had khushur. It softened itself and became numb. Why? Because Quran came on it. Then as a result, it became mutasaddi'ah. It collapsed and it turned into dust. That's what happened to a mountain when Quran was given to it. What happened to you? How come when you have Quran, your heart, nothing. There's no movement. Doesn't feel anything. Allah gave you Quran and put it in your heart that you can memorize it. You can listen to it. You can study it. You can read it. Every single day of your life, you're getting the same thing that caused a mountain to crumble and shatter into dust. What does that say about your heart now? What does that say about the hardness in, or the stiffness in your own heart? How come all of these lectures and all of these halaqas and all of these salawat that you're praying, how come there's no movement? Nothing's happening. I can't answer this question for you, by the way. This is a question you have to ask yourself. Anybody who listens to this, you have to ask yourself this question every single day. Because one of those days could be the last day where tomorrow you meet Allah. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Min khashiyatillah from his from the fear of Allah, wa tilka al-amthal nadribuha lil-nas la'allahum yatafakkarun." These are the examples or parables that we have shown all of mankind that, in hope, perhaps, insha Allah, they will think. You notice that the verse is saying linnas, people. The verses are talking to the people of Medina. These people already believe in Quran and Sunnah. So why didn't Allah just call them Muslim or Mu'min? Now I want you to think of yourself as people of Medina for a moment. All of us here, we believe in Quran and Sunnah. So the ayat are talking to you. And the ayat are saying you, people, Allah is not calling you by your title as a mu'min or Muslim. That's because if you forget Allah and you forget yourself, you're not even worthy of having this title of mu'min. You're not worthy of it. Allah called the people of Medina. If you fall into this state, you're just another person. Just a zombie moving around. Just live life, die. That's all it comes down to. So here we are, we're talking about the consequences of those who forget Allah. So what do you think Surah Al-Hashr does at the end? Something no Surah in the Quran does. Surah Al-Hashr is unique because it has the most names and attributes of Allah mentioned in one Surah. So here you are, you forget Allah. So in the same Surah, Allah is telling you the most about Him, SubhanAllah. Allah is telling you all of as many names and attributes you need to know about him. So listen to what Allah Azza wa Jal says. Allahu alladhi la ilaha illahu. It is him Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no deity worthy of worship but him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here's a couple attributes to think about that Allah wants to give you. Number one, Alimul Ghaybi wa Shahada. He has complete knowledge of the seen and the unseen. The seen and the unseen. So on the outside, Allah sees you. Allah sees what you're doing. But Allah Azza wa Jal also sees the unseen, what's in your heart. The real you. You can't hide from it. 
the end of the day, if you hate praying salah, but you're just doing it, the real you just hates it. You can't wait for the Imam to finish his surah and just finish the salah so you can just get up and just relax and chill out with the boys or whatever. Allah says, you see that attitude? I know exactly what's going on inside of you. So you better watch out. Huwa Rahman Rahim. He is the ultimate merciful one. SubhanAllah. Here we are, it's almost as if we're being threatened to a certain degree. Then Allah Azza wa Jal heals that, that threat or that feeling and says, look, I am at still at the end of the day, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. I'm still the ultimate merciful one. So at the end of the day, no matter how pathetic you think you are, no matter how much sins you've done in your life, at the end of the day, listen, understand one thing about me. The first ayah of these concluding verses of Allah telling us about Himself, the first thing He says to you, look, I am Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. That's what He leaves you with. Always remember I'm merciful. I'm here for you. In Surah Al-Furqan, Allah Azza wa Jal, after describing the three major crimes of Islam, which is what? Shirk, which is murder and zina. After this, Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَيْكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسْنَةً وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا So Allah Azza wa Jal says, except for the one who, does, who believes, who does righteous deeds, and as a result they live the life, Allah Azza wa Jal will not only forgive them, but He will take all of their sins and mistakes and transform them into good deeds. How did the ayah end? Allah didn't say, وَاللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah Azza wa Jal says, Wa kana Allahu ghafura rahim. Past tense. Why is Allah saying past tense here? Why not the present? Because imagine when you're in sin and you're doing the sin for 10, 20 years of your life, you're just sitting all the time. For some people, they lose this hope, they lose this connection with Allah. And they say, they convince themselves, Well, look, I haven't prayed in 20 years. What's the point of me starting now? Why should I do that now? This is why Allah says, look, when you were sinning, when you were watching those haram things, when you were talking to that guy you shouldn't have been talking to, I was always there ready to forgive you if you were to just going to turn your life. I was always there. You're the one that lost sight of me. I never lost sight of you. That's why Allah says, what can? I was always forgiving and merciful. It's your fault that you thought I wasn't going to forgive you, subhanAllah. You never lose hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. You just can't. If you lose hope in Allah, there's something seriously and spiritually wrong with you. There's something, there's, there's a kind of sickness in your heart for you to think that there's no way that Allah can help us. Considering having said that, what's happening in the world today, in the Muslim world. This phrase that Allah is not helping you, or this is a punishment and this and that, don't get into that stuff. We, we don't even talk about it. Don't even get into that. Well, this is why this is happening to these people. Because as a result, they didn't follow this, they didn't follow A, B, and C. You don't know that. So don't even talk about it. Just know one thing. In Allah, uh, Wallahu Alimun Hakim. Allah Azza wa Jal has complete knowledge and complete wisdom. He has knowledge and he knows what he's doing, so don't question him. This is part of his plan. These people are not dying in vain. Their, their, their lives aren't just being thrown away. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. It's, it's being executed at this moment. Then the next ayah, the second last verse, Allah tells you again, هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ it is Him, Allah Azza wa Jal. None is worthy of worship but Him. Al Malikul Quddus, Al Salamul Mu'min, Al Muhaymin, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Mutakabbir. Subhanallah, Amma Yushrikun. Allah Azza wa Jal says, He is Al Malik, the King. We are in Allah's kingdom, planet Earth, and He is our King. He is also Al-Quddus. Al-Quddus, He is the source of purification. At the end of the day, no matter how hard you struggle and strive with your heart, at the end of the day, only Allah can purify you. Only Allah can cleanse your heart.
So no matter what you do, no matter how much therapy you go to, no matter how much you go to the Imam and say, Oh Imam, do ruqya on me and cleanse my heart. Something's not right. It's not going to work if you don't remember Allah. It's not going to work. This is one of the things we're going to highlight tomorrow at the course. We're going to talk a little bit about the traps of the shaitan. The psychology behind these traps. We're not just going to list them to you and say, here, this is one trap, this is two, watch out, have taqwa, read Quran, salamu alaikum. We're going to talk about a little bit of the psychology of how these traps work and why they're there. You know, shaitan is very patient. Very, very patient. He will take his time with you. Because Allah gave them very, very long lives. Hundreds of years they can live. So they have all the time in the world to take their time and get you off track. So they have very, they're very patient. They're very skillful in the way they think. Based on the evidence that we have, shaitan puts a lot of thought in his plan. Doesn't just spontaneously says, okay, there's Muslim Khan, let me go get him. <laughs> and may Allah Azza wa Jal protect me, say Ameen. <laughs> But the point is, a lot of thought is put into it. So Allah says, He is Al-Quddus. He's the one that's going to purify us. He is also As-Salamul Mu'minul Muhaymin. He is the source of peace. He is the source of Iman. And He's the one that's watching every single thing that you do. Al-Azizul Jabbarul Mutakabbir. He is the, also the source of authority. He is also Al-Jabbar. Al-Jabbar comes from the word Jabarun. Jabarun means to take a bone and break it in half and then try to force it back together. So imagine if you have like a nice glass vase or something and you break it and you try to piece those, those, all those little pieces back together in its original form. That's what Jabarun or Jabarun is. So it's basically Allah says, I have the power to put you in your place, whether you like it or not. If I wanted to, I could just transform you and change you at this very moment. Then Allah Azza wa Jal concludes, Subhanallah Amma Yushrikun. Allah Azza wa Jal, praise be to Allah. He's far away from the allegations of the Mushrikun. Final ayah. This final ayah, Subhanallah itself is profound. I really want all of you to pay attention to how Allah concludes the surah. Because remember, we're talking about discovering the real you. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, Huwa al Khaliq. Allah is the creator. Al-Bari al-Musawwir. Al-Bari, he is the initiator. And he is also al-Musawwir. He's the fashioner. So you look in the mirror and you see all these freckles, all these massive birthmarks, a mole here, teeth is not straight, nose is all twisted, eyebrows looks like a downhill skiing sort of thing it's doing. You're, you're getting bald, getting too hairy or not enough hair, something. Allah says, look, I am al-musawwir, I fashioned you that way. We're not talking about somebody who needs like medical attention. If there's a scar or some sort of problem. We're not talking about those. We're talking about just naturally who you are. Allah Azza wa Jal, the fact that his act, one of his attributes is he is the fashioner. Allah Azza wa Jal takes pride in how he created you. Otherwise, we, this particular attribute wouldn't be singled out in Qur'an. So an example of this is, imagine you build a nice invention or a robot or you mold something out of clay. And it looks so beautiful that all the people, they come and they admire this. Like, my goodness, look at the detail on this thing. Look at the craftsmanship behind it. What are you, the, the owner, the one who designed and created this product? What are you going to tell people? Well, I did it. It's me. Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm the one who did it. You, know? you take pride in this product. You take pride in it. It's the same idea. Allah Azza wa Jal fashioned you with that nose. Fashioned you with those freckles. Fashioned you with the way your eyes are and so on. So Allah is saying to you, be content. Be careful. Be careful about this. Because all of this is going to cause you to forget him. All of this is going to cause you to forget him. Then the ayah continues, Lahul asma'ul husna. To him belongs all of the most beautiful names and attributes. Yusabbihu lahu ma fi samawati wal ardi wa huwa al azizul hakim. Everything in the heavens and in the earth 
is making tasbih to Allah Azza wa Jal. Pause. How did the surah start? Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wal ard. Allah commanded everybody to make tasbih to him. There's commandment. Allah said, I want you to make tasbih. Now we all know what tasbih is. Tasbih literally means to praise Allah by raising his honor and authority and status in your life. So when you say Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, what you're doing is you're raising that authority, that honor of Allah Azza wa Jal in your life. You always associate this power and this authority to him. At the end of the surah, Allah used the present tense. Yusabbihu lahu ma fis samawati wal ard. Everything in the heavens and the earth is making tasbih to Allah. The animals, the insects, the trees, the birds, the sun, the moon, the stars, all of this is making tasbih to Allah. All of it. The Prophet ﷺ told us that the croaking of a frog is its tasbih. So what happened to you? How come all of this is doing tasbih and not you? How come you can't get the tasbih out the way you want it? How come your heart is struggling to do that? What is holding you back? What's holding the real person inside of you? Why is it that your conscience, your real conscience can't breathe? You have to stop for a moment and look at yourself and look at your life. Look at what you listen to in your spare time. Look at what you speak about in your spare time. Look at the companions that you have and the friends. Look at the people that you spend the most time with. Look at the things that you preoccupy yourself when nobody is around. And then you'll know the answer. You'll be able to answer this question when you're alone. When you are alone, you can help discover the real you. You need some alone time with just you and Allah. If you don't have alone time with Allah, at least a small portion. You know, when I say this, here I am talking to you about having some alone time with Allah. Imagine if a companion heard what I just said, what he'd do to me. Five minutes of Allah time? Are you kidding? Come here. If Umar ibn al-Khattab saw me and heard what I just said, Ya Rasulullah, can I have Muslah's neck right now? Five minutes of your day? Are you kidding me? Is that what it came down to? That you have to have Allah time scheduled into your day? What would a companion do? What would the Prophet ﷺ do if he heard what I just said? And if he saw the state of what we were living with? We have Allah time. This is a new concept, but it's needed. Don't get me wrong, we need that. Got to start from something, from somewhere, assess something in your life. And then Allah concludes, وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Allah Azza wa Jal has full authority. Listen to the attribute, Hakim. He is also the most wise. At the end of the day, no matter what is happening, when all is said and done, Allah Azza wa Jal says, look, I am in control. And the state that you're in, I know what I'm doing. I just want you to do one thing, and that is keep remembering me. Tomorrow's course is about Ruqya, Sihr, it's about Ayn, evil eye, it's about spirit possession, a sur or a sar'u, and it's also about Ruqya. So we're going to talk about a number of different things. I don't want any of you to think that this topic is relevant to a particular group of people. Oh, alhamdulillah, I don't have no jinns with me, so I'm all good. I don't need to attend the course. Really, come to my course and I'll show you where your jinn is. I'll show you where your jinn is. <laughs> I'll show you where he is. This topic is even your children. Don't think, I'm not going to scare them off or anything. It's not going to be one of those topics. We're simply going to understand the psychology or the implications behind these topics. Because there's a lot of mumbo jumbo people talk about associated with the jinn world. A lot of things you think they can do, but they really can't do. And at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, at the end of the day, you have 
two things that no jinn ever created will ever surpass. They have it as well, but they will never surpass you, the human being. You have two things that will always make you stronger than the jinn. What are those two things? <laughs> you better attend my class. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you attend my class and then you'll know what those two things are. So having said that, brothers and sisters, I'd like to conclude bi-ithnillahi ta'ala. And wallahi, usually I like to summarize some of the things that I mention. I'm not going to do that. But I'm simply going to pray and make dua to Allah for myself and for all of you. Wallahi, this community, I, I've said this before and I will say it again. My heart is attached to all of you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to accept all of you and love all of you and accept the fighting chance that you have in this world. You just have one chance to make this right. We have one chance to do this right. And after we leave here and all that dirt is thrown in our face, we don't want to be of those that say, رَبِّ رُجِعُونِ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ الصَّالِحًا فيما تَرَكْتِ We don't want to be of those people that say, Oh, my master, send me back just for a little bit. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ الصَّالِحًا So I can just do a couple righteous deeds. I can do just a few more things that I missed out in this world. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the strength and the Iman that we can put 100% as much as we can, as best as we can. Say Ameen. Ameen. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala continue to increase us in knowledge. Ameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal continue to increase us in ikhlas and taqwa. Allahumma Ameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect our young people, our young children, our sons and our daughters, our husbands and our wives. May Allah Azza wa Jal continue to preserve and, to, and protect them in this world. Ameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect our our mothers and our fathers, those are who, who are still with us and those who have passed on and returned to Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant our mothers and fathers Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la, Allahumma Ameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect and give Nasr and aid and assistance to our brothers and sisters throughout the Muslim world. May Allah Azza wa Jal give them strength. 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 Strength, Allahumma Ameen. Allah, I can't imagine what it would feel like, and I'm sure all of us, we share the same thoughts. What it would feel like living in those parts of the world, going through what those people go through. May Allah Azza wa Jal give them strength, and may Allah Azza wa Jal give us the strength, at least in our dua and in our wealth, at least we could help them in whatever way that we can. Send our money, send our dua, do as much as you can and help these people. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us that strength. Allahumma Ameen. So these are the words that I conclude with may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen